Welcome to Billy's Books. Today I'm going to do another Star Wars book, but instead of being an obscure novel, this time it's going to actually be one of the movie, uh, the novelizations of the movie. This one is Revenge of the Sith, ep a.k.a. Episode 3. We all know the prequels aren't very good, um, so, uh, but Episode 3, I wanted, I remember going to the movies back when it came out, wanting it to be good so bad, and it still wasn't, except for the Chancellor, who was awesome. Um, but I read recently that the novelization of Episode 3, Revenge of the Smith, Revenge of the Sith, is better than the movie, which is not a hard, large bar to cross. They succeeded. It is indeed a better book than movie. This is the first plane that's been flying over since I set up here. When Palpatine talks to Anakin, he often does something where he describes how evil the Jedi are by how they hold on to power or how, or how they keep power or how they covet power and all these things and it's it's very transparent that when he's talking about the Jedi warning Anakin about the Jedi and how evil they are everything he talks about power and how to keep it and covet it and all that sort of stuff is so obviously about himself as well that it reminds me of some of our earthly politicians that also project upon others that which they, they themselves are guilty for. Thank you. It is... The novelization is superior to the movie. Okay. Um, though uh, the, novel, the novel is based on the movie, t uh, the screenplay, but he filled in a lot of gaps. I don't know how much more gaps were in the screenplay, but he did a lot of fill-in. Um, you know the basic story. Um, Anakin... Uh, is worried about his secret pregnant wife, the Senator Padme Amidala. He's worried. He keeps having premonitions of her death during childbirth, so he tries really hard to find a way. He's worried about it, um, and, he, and uh, the Chancellor offers a potential solution um, whilst also undermining his Jedi, um, his um, attachments to the Jedi and his friendships with all of them, especially Obi-Wan. They really lean hard in the beginning of this book and throughout about just how much Anakin and Obi-Wan are tight love. They love each other so much. They're tight brothers. They count each other for everything. They've been through so much together. They're galactically famous for being the, the daring duo, the inseparable, the unconquerable Obi-Wan and Anakin, Anakin and Obi-Wan, Skywalker and Kenobi. They're the best. Man, what a team. What a lot of love. They really, he really piles it on thick. Man, what a bond they had. Okay, so without much piling on at the beginning of an obvious tragedy, they're going to break your heart. Since Anakin has been denied mastership on the Jedi Council, which you shouldn't be surprised of because he's so young, but he's also so incredibly awesome that he thinks he deserves it, Chance, the Chancellor, Palpatine, is encouraging Anakin to feel like he deserves to be a master, even though he's the youngest ever to have done such a thing or to aspire to such a thing. Um, the, the previously youngest, we learn in this book, the previously youngest mass Jedi master was Mace Windu, who is the most dubious of all the Jedi Council about the um, Palpatine. He's the one who really suspects that the Palpatine is under, at least under the influence of this mysterious Dark Sidious whom they can't locate. Let's talk a little bit about the Jedi Council, shall we? So even though they hadn't written it yet when they made Episode 3, um, they later on did write about how the Jedi Council um, kind of betrayed uh, Ahsoka, Anakin's Padawan, and they kind of threw her under the bus. And then when it turned out she was innocent, they apologized. But Ahsoka was like, uh, you know what? No thanks, I'm out. You guys, I don't trust you. And I don't know, I'm kind of disillusioned. It also um, put a serious chink in Anakin's armor uh, of uh, believing in a Jedi as well. So then later on in episode three, aka this book, um, they did it again. Anyway... Uh, so Anakin has been um, sent since since he can't become a master. Uh, the Chancellor's like, well, I'll just I'll just tell them they have to put you on the council as my representative. 
And so they do that. They say, okay, well, you are on the council as Palpatine's representative, but you are representing him. You will speak his views, not your own. And just for the record, you are not a master. Why you're not a master? Because you can't control your feelings. Sure, you're powerful, but you're also, um, you don't follow instructions and you fly into rages. And when they tell him that, he flies into a rage right in front of them. And they're like, see? And then they said, oh, on top of that, let's have him spy on Palpatine back. Um, and Obi-Wan was like, don't make him choose, you know, between two different friends or two different, don't make him choose. And one of the stupid ass Jedi council guys, not one of the big stars, but one of the guys, you know, the holographs whose name I don't remember. He's like, well, Obi-Wan, are you afraid that he'll choose Palpatine over you? Ha ha ha. And it's like, dude, way to miss the freaking point. Um, and Obi-Wan is really torn because he's like, you're putting me in an awfully awkward position here. But, um, and so they missed the point twice. So it's not surprising that things go wrong with them being so pigheaded. Or, as Barbara Tuckman would say, wooden headed. It's a good book. I mean, if you've seen the movie and you don't care, then don't read the book. But if you want to fill in the gaps and have the acting be better, because it's your own imagination instead of George Lucas telling very famous people to act poorly. This is the book for you. If you can't do, review.